Coming up on River City Presents, candidate for mayor of Paducah and businessman, Mr. George Bray. Welcome to River City Presents. My name is Daniel Hurt. There's no secret that the most hotly contested election in Paducah McCracken County is the race for mayor. There are three candidates running, Richard Abraham, George Bray, and Dewan Thomas. They want to lead the city for the next four years. And joining me today is businessman Mr. George Bray. Welcome, George, to the show. Thank you, Daniel. My pleasure. So tell me a little bit about yourself. You know, sort of just assume I don't know who George is and tell me who you are and why you're running for mayor. Well, I was born and raised here in Paducah. Um, I'm the oldest of nine children. Uh, I graduated from St. Mary High School. Um, I attended, uh, after high school, I went away to uh, Indiana University and got a degree in uh, business and came back and started in the pharmaceutical distribution business at a company called L.S. Du Bois. Um, this was 1973. And, uh, Spent my entire career in pharmaceutical distribution, healthcare distribution. Uh, the name of the company uh, over the years changed from L.S. Du Bois to Alco uh, to Amerisource and finally to Amerisource Bergen. And what goes into that exactly? Could you tell me about sort of what Amerisource Bergen does? What did? Uh, Amerisource Bergen is, um, is a pharmaceutical distributor. Uh, so that company essentially um, uh, orders product from uh, the, the, the major pharmaceutical manufacturers, uh, puts it in their warehouses and redistributes it uh, to drugstores, hospitals, clinics, uh, wherever a prescription is filled here in the United States. And so you decided to run for mayor. Was, was 2020 a special year or what, what made you decide to run for mayor? Well, I retired from Amerisource Bergen in 2016 and then began uh, my second career uh, with an international uh, pharmaceutical distribution trade association. And so my, my time constraints uh, and my time demands really changed. And as I began to uh, sort of uh, reconnect with the community here, uh, I offered my service uh, to the uh, Barclay Regional Airport Board uh, and began serving. And um, uh, also um, was involved in some other community organizations, the Oscar Cross Boys and Girls Club. I was uh, asked to join the PACRO board. And as I got more involved in it, um, I, I began to see that, uh, that uh, I liked it uh, and that I could, uh, I felt like I could make a difference. And so um, in 2019, I began thinking uh, very seriously about uh, running for mayor. And, you know, really, Daniel, the stars just aligned, uh, you know, with my career, my family, and uh, it was just uh, something that the timing was good, and I felt like my skill sets, uh, my skill sets, um, you know, fit into, um, from a leadership perspective, uh, fit into um, uh, being mayor. Well, I, you know, we'll ask about your airport board experience in just a moment, but one of the questions I want to start out with is, and I'm going to ask every candidate that runs, that's running for mayor to do this, and you know, what is your idea of good government? What does that look like if you're mayor? Um, my idea of, of good government is uh, first and foremost, uh, you know, taking care of the tax revenues uh, that are collected from our, our citizens, uh, making sure that those revenues are spent uh, in a financially, uh, fiscally responsible way. Uh, so I think that's very important. And it's also in the area of communication. Uh, I feel like that uh, we must communicate uh, with our citizens the way those tax revenues are being spent. Uh, so I believe uh, very much in an open and transparent government. Uh, and what open and transparent means is really uh, just communicating with people about what's going on. Um, and I think sometimes that can be challenging uh, because people don't, uh, they don't always listen very attentively uh, until, they, until they hear that uh, things maybe aren't going right and then, they're, then they become very attentive. <laughs> so it's, uh, I think it's very important that we do everything that we can to take our message to citizens. Well, transparency had been an issue this last administration, and of course they're going out. What, what do you think that you could do to make city government more transparent? 
Well, I think uh, a lot of it has to do with the style, uh, you know, the way you communicate with people. But I think some of the, the formal things that we could do is, uh, you know, one of the things I like to say, our city commission meetings are, um, you know, of course we're in the middle of COVID and we're not meeting face to face right now. But um, if you've been down to a city commission meeting and you want to talk, uh, you have to, of course, put your name in ahead of time and then you walk up uh, to, uh, uh, to a, a, a designated place where, where the folks have to talk and, uh, and the commissioners, the mayor and the commissioners are, are elevated above you and so it's, a, it's a very intimidating uh, for somebody who's never done that before. And so I think um, I'd like to look at ways that we can break down that intimidation factor. Uh, I'd really like to move city commission meetings uh, around the city. I would like to uh, locate those meetings at different points in the city, which would give people in certain particular areas the opportunity to come, whether or not we scheduled it at a church or a school, uh, but, but give people the opportunity to come in and, and really be a part of a city commission meeting, see how it works, and make them comfortable uh, in, in understanding what goes into our government. So you're going where they are, I like that. What do you think about, because I know there have been some controversial issues and public comment had sort of lasted for two or three hours, and look, I mean, I know public officials have lives too, just like everybody else. What right. do you think about, you know, some cities have changed it to where <coughs> public comment has to be about what's on the agenda or they limit the number of people. What do you think is the appropriate step for that? Well, I believe that um, I, I would not limit the comments. Uh, of course, I would have to work with uh, my fellow, com fellow commissioners in the new commission, but I do not feel like the comments uh, need to be limited only to the agenda items. I think there's times when people need to be heard, they want to be heard, but I think that needs to be controlled. And so I'm not sure exactly how we would do that. Uh, I don't think it's uh, right for 20 people to get up and say the same thing over and over and over again. And then their opponents or their the opposite view get up and their 20 people get up and, <laughs> and say the same things over and over again. So I think a leadership imperative uh, of the mayor is to, is to make sure that, uh, that, they, that, that uh, people don't drone on and on about the same things. But with that being said, I think people need to be heard. Um. Yeah, and I know that most recently they had some barriers put up. I read that they put some barriers up in City Hall and there was some question about how much that cost to do social distancing and they never got back with them. I mean, that's, would you say that the city needs to be more transparent about what it's spending? I don't, I don't understand, uh, you know, from my perspective, I don't understand. I mean, there's, there's a cost associated with doing that. Somebody knows what those costs are. I, um, you know, our, our citizens who pay, pay taxes are entitled to know where the city spends money, so I don't know what the big deal is, you know, as far as just letting people know how much it costs to do that. Yeah, I've, and one of, the, one of the things that, I don't guess it's so much a problem now as it was, but I think it's still a concern on people's mind, but city government and county government hadn't always got along, and so what, what can you do to sort of foster a positive relationship between city and county government? Well, I feel like um, uh, relationship building and collaboration has been uh, a strong point. Uh, it's, it's a strong part of, part of my skill set and it has been my entire career. And so I, um, I, I think the, the, the relationship between the city and county is, is critical. I think you have to, um, uh, they have goals and they have challenges. Uh, we have goals and we have challenges. But I think that we need to come together and work together. Uh, really, the way si the, the city and county is, is kind of designed, you know, we're two separate governments, but uh, we're really not going to accomplish all the things that we want to accomplish here in Paducah, McCracken County if we don't work together. Right. So I think it's critical that we work together, and that would be a very high priority on my part. And I think, you know, uh, talking about working with your fellow commissioners, whoever they may be, you know, what do you see your role being at, at the city as mayor working with your commissioners? Are you, what's your vision for your working relationship like? 
Well, the relationship that I would have with my fellow commissioners would, would be critical to our success. We, um, um, I, I, I believe that they need to know uh, very much what's going on. Uh, I would uh, choose to keep them informed of uh, initiatives that, that I was working on or are leading. Um, I don't believe that any commissioner could come to, should come to a city commission meeting without having seen all the background on all the things that have been developed for the agenda for that night. And I think it's imperative on them to prepare for those, those commission meetings uh, so, that, uh, so that if people have questions, uh, that they can answer those questions from citizens and also they can be prepared to have a, a robust discussion, if necessary, about the agenda items for the meeting. So I think involving commissioners in decisions uh, and in the background for decisions is very important. Well, it just makes practical sense to me. Um, but you know, one of the things you campaign on, you're the you're the business guy who's going to try to bring businesses to Paducah. So, what's your uh, what's your plans to bring jobs here? Because you know, a lot of jobs have left over the last 20 years. And what do you think we can do to bring some of them back or bring some new ones? Well, it's not uh, it's not an easy subject, and it's uh, it's not going to uh, change overnight. But we uh, there's there's a number of places that uh, we can focus on on jobs, uh, better jobs. Paducah needs more jobs and it needs more better jobs. Uh, certainly we can, uh, we can focus on recruitment of industry from outside the area uh, through the uh, Economic Development Board, GPED. Uh, so that's very important, but that's very competitive. Uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's lots of counties and, and municipal governments looking to attract uh, people to relocate from all over the country. So it's highly competitive. It's important, but it's highly competitive. Uh, really, two-thirds to 75% of new jobs are created with businesses that are already in place now. And so our focus really should be, uh, as much as anything, is helping the businesses that now exist in our community to grow and expand, taking the barriers down uh, that, that, uh, that they might see, uh, to grow and add jobs, and um, and so that would be very much a focal point. What are some of those barriers? Um, I think <clears throat> there's um, uh, access to capital is typically a barrier that that businesses face. Um, access to to really expertise. A lot of times, uh, businesses that want to grow uh, really don't know how to grow. Um, <clears throat> You know, those are the, the, the two things that, um, uh, that I hear a lot about. Um, and, then, and then sometimes the city itself, or the city or the county, uh, can present uh, barriers for businesses, uh, you know, expansion barriers. And so as mayor, you know, I would, a, a big part of what I would be doing is, um, is working with businesses to make sure that those barriers uh, were taken down where, whenever, where, wherever and whenever they exist. Uh, what do you think, because you, you mentioned something about it, what do you think about the current setup of the Paducah Economic Development Council? Uh, do you think it's a good model? <clears throat> well, I think the jury's out on that uh, a bit, um, and I will be a board member. Uh, I will be part of that board as mayor, and I'm looking forward to that opportunity to uh, be a part of that board and and hopefully be influential within that board. Um, I think it's better than it was because w they they reduced the board, and so I think fewer board members um, is is better than many board members uh, in order to focus. Uh, but really, I think the performance of GPED has a lot to do with. Uh, the board members and the way the board members work together, and of course our uh, our our director uh, of economic development, you know, and uh, that person's uh, performance and his or her relationship with the board, um, and then the other thing uh, really that's really key for economic development is, and we've already covered it, but it's the way the city and the county and the whole community work together. When we have uh, we have uh, prospects coming in from the outside, we all have to be singing 
from the same hymn book. We all have to be on the same page. It's very important uh, that when prospects see our community, they see us um, <clears throat> talking with the same with the same voice. That's interesting. One of the uh, one of the about half of the city's employees are organized in labor unions, whether it's the FOP or the firefighters <coughs> or the uh, AFSCME. So you'll you'll be working with organized labor as mayor, and you know what? Uh, do you think you can have a positive relationship with the labor community as mayor? Do I think I will? Do you think you will? Yes, I think I will have a very positive uh, relationship with uh, the labor unions as mayor. Um, as you pointed out, we have a fire and police union, and then we have uh, another union that's involved with the cities, and uh, with the city, and. Um, I mean, we cannot, the city cannot do its job uh, without all of our over 300 employees, whether or not they're within a union or not, without all of them pulling together and doing the very best that they can every day. And, and in order for them to do the very best, they have to have a positive relationship with, uh, with the city and with the elected officials. And uh, I fully expect to have a very positive relationship with those unions. What are you going to do to help Southside? Because as somebody growing up, Southside was Paducah to me, and I feel like it's an often overlooked part of town. So what, what is, what's on your agenda for Southside? Well, the Southside, uh, we have a lot of work to do on the Southside. Uh, you know, we've got a couple of hotels out there on the Southside that really need to be demolished. Um, but, you know, I don't think the city itself uh, can, can rejuvenate the Southside. I think... If someone, um, I, I think the people that live on the south side, the people that work in the south side, the business owners uh, that are out there, I, I think I would like to propose that we pull a group together of leaders on the south side and, and I would like to participate in that group. But I think any development we have on the south side has to come from within the south side. Sort of the stakeholders. Uh, exactly. I think there are there are many stakeholders. Uh, uh, there are business owners out there that don't necessarily live on the south side, but they make their living uh, yeah. every single day on the south side. And I want to pull a group together uh, to to help influence outcomes on the south side. Well growing up that was always the place to be, you know, whenever I'd go get groceries or whatever we'd go to south side. Do you think our downtown's healthy? I think our, our downtown is, um, yeah, I think it's healthy. I mean I don't think, I don't think it's very healthy right now with COVID. Uh, I think it's, 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 we're in a very challenging environment and I know there's a lot of businesses struggling. Uh, but I think that uh, pre-COVID, uh, we had a healthy, a healthy downtown that really needed to get, uh, that needed to get healthier. Uh, I think our downtown has made a lot of improvements uh, over the last 20 years, but there's more improvements to to be made. And certainly, I think we all, uh, the the downtown of any city is really the, it's the epicenter. Uh, it's where people want to come. It's where what people want to come and eat. Uh, they want to come and be entertained. <clears throat> we have uh, we have the Carson Center downtown. That's been um, you know a huge shot in the arm uh, mm -hmm. for our community. Uh, we have the Market House Theater. We have the Quilt Museum. These are all very important parts of our downtown. But can it do? Can we do more? Can we do better? We certainly can. Well, what do you think about the hotel <clears throat> project? Well, I think the the hotel project on on the surface is um, uh, is a great idea. I think there's some uh, some controversy within the community about the location of the hotel, um, and and there's some uh, we still uh, we've 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 uh, we've put in our TIF application, and uh, apparently there's a negotiation going back and forth between the state uh, and the city as to see what uh, the state of Kentucky is really going to uh, allow with our TIP application. Uh, I am personally headed up to Louisville uh, on Wednesday to meet uh, with the developer to learn more about the project and learn more about the developer themselves and uh, some, of their, uh, some of their different projects. So from my standpoint, I, uh, I want to find out more 
Uh, I'm, I, I seek to gain more, more information about the TIF. Uh, that's my style. Mm -hmm. uh, the project really uh, is not my project. Uh, it was not my project, and so I listen. I listen to a lot of people in the community uh, for and against the project. And as I uh, as I move forward, I'm going to find out more about the TIF, more about the developer, and uh, I think I think the TIF application process is going to take some time. And so I fully expect uh, myself and my fellow commissioners to be the uh, to be the folks uh, dealing with this project. What about the aquatic center? Because I know they postponed it to the end of the year, and so if you're mayor, you'll be dealing with that, I guess, after the first of the year. So, and I know there's been some. <coughs> A lot of differences of opinions on that project. So, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think uh, the the aquatic center. It's probably the very first thing that our commission will have to will have to be a part of. I mean, we'll have to make a decision on. It's been paused for six months, and uh, there was a lot of people who felt like it should not be paused. It should be just uh, just scrambled. So they've left that decision up to the new uh, the new commission. And if I'm elected mayor, um, you know, the Aquatic Center in its current form, uh, financed completely by uh, tax revenues uh, in, its, uh, uh, in, in its, the way it's financed and, um, and the size of it, uh, I am not for it. And uh, so one of the first things that we will have to do is make a decision on that. Uh, I don't feel like uh, any of the commissioners um, that uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure you can find a commissioner out there that's really for it. Yeah. And so I think it's pretty clear that uh, the Aquatic Center is, is not scheduled to go forward. And then we'll be dealing with uh, what do we do about the, the $20 million in bond funds uh, that were sold specifically for the Aquatic Center. Uh, what are we going to do with those bond funds and how are we going to make the best use? So that we can spend, can we spend that money on other things? And if we so, what's, uh, what, what would you like to do with it? Well, I think, um, you know, a lot of people have talked about stormwater uh, and our stormwater needs. Uh, I was driving around this weekend. Um, uh, we had a pretty heavy rain on, on Saturday and, um, and we had a lot of high water around the, the city. There's no question the city has stormwater needs. Um, I'm not necessarily uh, for spending all of $20 million on, on storm, storm water because the city has other needs. Um, you know, I'm, uh, neighborhood redevelopment uh, is something that I would, uh, that I'm passionate about. Uh, I think it's very important that we, uh, uh, we look at um, uh, other areas of the city that need to be developed just like uh, Fountain Avenue area. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that would be a priority, but really it's, um, uh, it's it's going to have a lot to do with what uh, my fellow commissioners are interested in doing. So we're going to have to come together as a team, as a group, and we're going to have to prioritize the use of those funds. Talk about you know your experience on the airport board and uh, what insights that brings to the office of mayor and maybe how, I don't know if geography impacts your decision making or your thought process or what. Well, Barclay Regional Airport is truly a regional airport. So our passengers, um, they come from southeast Missouri, southern Illinois, west Tennessee, and of course western Kentucky. Um, <clears throat> and uh, we, so truly being a regional airport, it's really given me visibility to how important Paducah is as a regional hub. As mayor of Paducah, um, because Paducah is uh, the county seat uh, for McCracken County and because so many people from, uh, from those uh, outlying states come to Paducah to shop and dine and be entertained. I think the leadership of Paducah uh, as a regional hub is very, very important. And I, I, think, that's, uh, I think that's very important uh, that we see ourselves as a regional hub and, we, and that our decision making uh, is, uh, it takes that into mind. I think that's very important. And the other thing I would say about Barclay Regional Airport, uh, you know, we're in the process of building a new terminal out there, and we're going to, uh, we're going, the FAA is going to spend, uh, and the state uh, and ourselves are going to spend uh, in excess of forty million dollars on a new terminal 
the relocation of a new terminal. And one of the things that I learned um, a couple of years ago when I went to Washington talking with the FAA about um, uh, about lobbying them for for that money, and one of the things they said to me at the time, they said, you know, I I think um, I think we have that money allocated for Paducah, for a regional airport down there. But in order for that money to be attained, the community has to be on the same page about it. You can't have different segments of the community, you know, some saying, yeah, I think we need a new terminal, and others saying, you know, what do we need, and what do we need a new terminal for? The community has to be together. And so that was a very big learning for me. And, and I think that has shaped a lot of my thinking as mayor. Um, I feel like that we, we have to come together as a community and we have to talk with one voice. And that's not always easy. Uh, so that's been a big learning for, for me as I, uh, as I contemplate being mayor. Uh, we, uh, we're almost out of time, and, uh, but I'd like for you to make your final pitch to the voters, you know, uh, what, why should they hire you over your competitors, if you would? I think it's all about leadership. Uh, I think uh, Paducah is at a point in its uh, life cycle where it needs strong leadership. Uh, we need to focus on the right things uh, moving forward. Uh, we need to develop uh, more, better jobs for Paducah. Economic development is critical uh, to our future. Uh, we've had a, a gradual population loss uh, over the last uh, 40 years. And in order to arrest that population, uh, that loss of population, we have to find, uh, we have to find jobs. And we can do that in a number of different ways. We can recruit them, uh, but we can, also, uh, we, ought, we can also help our businesses in Paducah grow. And, you know, CSI, uh, one of the things I like to say, CSI is one of our, probably our most successful homegrown business. Well, we might have two or three CSIs out there in our community now, and we need to identify them and help them grow for the future. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming on the show, George, and I hope you'll come back with us. Uh, well, it's been a lot of fun. I think we're looking forward to having all the other candidates on. But that was my guest, George Bray, candidate for Mayor of Paducah. Uh, there are three candidates running that want to lead this city, but remember the most important thing is that choice is yours in November, and make sure you vote. Thank you all for watching. I'd like to thank my, our sponsor, Project Pomona, which fights uh, poverty and, and food insecurity. So we'll hope you join us next time. Thank you. <laughs>